chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, and once you've found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God, Acts chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5 this morning, everyone standing as we read the Word of God this morning. I think it's important when the Word of God is read that everyone stands and um, gives reverence to the Word of God, Acts chapter 1. And verse 1, if you have it, give me a good, strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 1, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. I want you to just, let me just stop right here and just say this. The reason why Maranatha Baptist Church is a church of action because our Savior was a man of action. Amen. I don't think that we ought to be coasting in this life. I think we ought to be doing something for the Lord in this life. He says, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen to them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. I was reading this verse. Um, uh, okay, let me just say this. So I, I've been burdened a little bit um, for, for s several members of our church about what I want to preach about this morning, and I knew that I needed to preach on this topic. And I had determined I was going to preach on this topic this Sunday. Monday morning, I was reading this passage of Scripture, and I saw that phrase, and being assembled together, being assembled together. I want to talk to you this morning, preach to you, whatever I do, and, um, but I want to help our church. I don't know that you know how burdened I get for some of you, Amen. and I'm, I'm just being honest with you. There, there are some in this room, many in this room, I get very, very burdened for, and it's because of what I want to preach about this morning. If you've ever listened, I ask you to listen this morning. Amen. Young person, if you've ever sat up and listened, I want you to sit up and listen. I, I'm going to give you something that's going to help you in life if you'll follow what's preached this morning. Father, this is one of those topics I, I don't hesitate to preach, but I sometimes I, I feel almost guilty of preaching it because of the fact that I know it's Sunday morning and there's people here with heartaches. That I wish I could, I could deal with those heartaches, but because... Sometimes how they deal with them, they can't deal with them right because of what I'm about ready to preach. Some don't understand the importance of what I'm going to preach this morning. But one day down the road, they're going to wish they'd have listened, that had done what was preached. I'm asking the Holy Ghost, do a work in the hearts of your people, please. If someone is here today that's not saved, help them to get saved, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. God made us body, soul, spirit. Everybody has a body. You say, how do you know? Because I'm looking at it. Teenager, sit up. This isn't bedtime. Sit up, sit up tall. There you go. Everybody has a body. Now, some are uglier than others. Just saying. It's going to be a rough day, yeah. Um, everybody has a body. Everybody has a soul. Um, I was flying on the airplane with my daughter, and they would bumped us up to first class. And we're sitting in first class, and the gate agent came inside, and she poked her head in the cockpit, and she told the pilot, there are 130 souls on this craft. That was the wording they used. I said to my daughter, did you hear that? She was a teenager at the time, which means there was no brain. I mean, anyway, and um, of course that's, but anyway. 
<laughs> I got to stop it. And so I said, did you? She goes, and I said, she goes, what, what? I said, they said 130 souls. She goes, and? I said, 130 souls. I said, God saves a soul yes. from hell. When a person dies, their soul either goes to heaven or it goes to hell. So I said, I said, isn't that interesting that even the airline industry recognizes there's a soul inside of the body? Um, you know, I used to work for the coroner. You say, what did you do? It was kind of a dead job. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We're really going deep today, but it, we're even going to, anyway, let me keep on going, but, but I would pick up dead bodies. It was obvious, obvious, Brother Trimble, when I'd pick up a body, something was missing. Yeah. Yeah. The body was there, but the soul was gone right. because we are made of body, soul, and what? Spirit. Now, spirit inside of us is dead until you get saved. Right. And then that spirit comes alive because the Holy Spirit moves inside and makes the spirit alive. Do you got that right now? That's why before you got saved, you heard the preaching of the word of God. It was like, what in the world? The word of God, you read the word of God and it never, but all of a sudden you got saved and all of a sudden God's words started meaning something to you. Why? Because now you have a Holy Spirit on the inside telling you the words of the Holy Spirit inside of his word and now all of a sudden you're understanding what those words meant because the Holy Spirit is in there. Now, we have to keep every part of our being fit for God. Yeah. I believe, and I'm just, and I'm just giving you. The, I, I, I do believe. I'm not against exercise. I think it's good to be in shape. God does say bodily exercise profiteth little. Now it may profit little, but it does profit. I can live longer. Help me out. If I live right, now I'm not one of these that that's going to eat tree roots and flower petals and, and organic. I'm not going to do that. I like the healthy things of fried chicken. Somebody help me out. And fried eggs every morning. Somebody help me out. And fried bacon. I mean, the healthy stuff. You know, it puts the grease inside of your bones to make them work a little bit better. You know, I mean, but, but we have to eat every day, do we not, to stay healthy. I got to feed my soul. How do I feed my soul? God's word. I've got to read God's word daily. The reason why I try to get you to get in God's word daily is to feed your soul. But your spirit also needs to be fed. You say, how do I feed my spirit? You come to church to feed your spirit. Understand, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but what? Exhorting. What are you exhorting? The spirit. How many, how many times have you ever crawled kind of, you know, you know um, I'm just kind of, you know, you, you felt like you're crawling in the church. And you got around the singing yeah. and the fellowship yeah. and you heard the preaching and your spirit was built back up and you walked out and said, man, that was a good day in church. Well, that helped my spirit. I get, I, I, normally after every service, I'll get somebody with two or three people text me, boy, I needed that. That Help me. And you know what? You know why? Because you, your spirit was lifted up. You assembled. You were exhorted because you were in church. Now, it's interesting that it says here in Acts 1-4, and being assembled together. Notice it does not say, and being assembled over live stream. People often say, preacher, do you have your do you have your services live stream? No, because you can't assemble on live stream. That's right. That's right. We have assembled this morning. You with me? You came from your place. I came from my place. And we came here to church. We've assembled together. 
The church in the book of Acts gave us an example to assemble together. We have let the media world and the liberal world get this now infiltrate our Christianity and we've let COVID kind of separate us and the devil knows what he's doing because there's something about being in church. I mean, as mean as Miss Cheryl is to me, I still enjoy being around her because she, I like her smile and I like her laughter and I, I enjoy her being in church and even my son-in-law, he may, I may pick on her, but I enjoy getting around him as, li- as little, but anyway, I enjoy getting around him and bells with the men, the choir and you folks and I get to shake hands and it lifts my spirit. You know what? We're assembled together. There's something about coming together. But follow me. Imagine if the early church followed the example of churches today. Think about it. What would have happened to the miracles and blessings had they only had Sunday morning service? Right. Let me tell you what would have happened. The great prayer meeting that we just read about in the upper room where the Holy Ghost power fell down upon them, the Holy Ghost would have never fallen. That's right. Right. That's right. Amen. The church would exist would have existed without the power of God. Right. They would have missed the day of Pentecost. They would not have been ready for the day of Pentecost because Sunday night and midweek service, the preacher is preparing people for the big day. Understand the day of Pentecost, Peter didn't just stand up helter-skelter and say, okay, we're going to preach and 3,000 people show up. Somebody had to invite them. Had they not had evening services, they would have missed the opportunity to turn the world upside down for Jesus Christ. Understand that many of the great works that happened in the early church didn't just happen in the morning, but they happened at night. They happened during the week when they had evening services. God did a work in that early church because the people gathered, the Bible says, daily. They were always in church. And I know I'm talking right now, and I know there's a there's a there's a, not in this place, but there's a there's a world out there that hates it when a preacher says you ought to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. But may I tell you, you ought to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yeah, go ahead. Amen. That's good. Imagine if the early church assembled as faithfully as many members assemble today. Yeah. Right. Come on. Our church would be without the gospel. Our world would probably not have the gospel. And you'd likely not be saved and on your way to hell. Paul would have never, Saul, Saul who became the apostle Paul, likely would have never got saved because Stephen would have never grown in the Lord. And Stephen would have never become a deacon. And Stephen would have never become filled with the Holy Ghost. And Stephen would have never gone out. But because they had a a morning service and an evening service and a midweek service, the apostle Stephen was, was challenged and exhorted to go out. And he went out and became a faithful deacon in the church. And thank God. Why? Because Paul got saved saved from the preaching of a deacon. Do you realize the Gentile world, you say, who's that? That's us. The Gentile world was reached because of the Apostle Paul. Follow me carefully. (coughs) This church assembled in morning, night, and midweek. Let me illustrate. At nighttime, you might recall, the Apostle Paul was preaching. He was preaching long, the Bible says. It was at midnight. Aren't you glad I don't preach that long? At midnight, a guy fell out of the loft. He had a balcony where they were meeting. Fell out of the loft and killed himself. Paul, this is why I don't preach to midnight. Paul went over and raised him from the dead. You say, why don't you preach to midnight? Because i got to raise the dead if they fall out. But anyway. <laughs> and he went and raised him from the dead. Now, when did that happen? On a Sunday night. Right. Right. Yep. The reason why we have Sunday night church is because it's in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
So we follow the example of Sunday night church. We also follow the example of midweek services. You say, why? Okay, Peter was in prison. And he, while he was in prison, the church in the middle of the week was having a prayer meeting. Right, right. And they were praying. And God heard the prayer in the middle of the week while that church is having, an, uh, having a prayer meeting. It was at night, get this now, it was at night time that God delivered Peter from the prison. And the first place Peter went was to the church. Yeah. He went to the church, follow me carefully, went to the church, knocked on the door. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Little maid comes. She says, who's there? Get this, they're praying for Peter to be released from prison. Who's there? It's Peter. She didn't believe it. He, she goes, who's there? Peter. And so what she do? She runs back. Hey, 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 God answer our prayer. Peter's outside. They say, be quiet, we're praying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that they had our faith. And, and, and finally, they open the door. Peter comes inside. Now, follow me carefully. Why did he come inside? What, why? I'll tell you exactly why. He came in. That, what, when did all this happen? At nighttime, midweek. We don't do a Sunday night and a Wednesday night for no reason. We do it because we follow the example of the scriptures. That's why we do it. Now, God says, not forsaking the what? Assembling of ourselves together. God says, every time the church assembles, everyone in the church needs to be there. Right. Now, can I tell you this? Um, you say, preacher, what would not have happened had the early church not attended? Okay, they would have missed the filling of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Right. Listen, you will never see God's power on your life when you're hit and missed to the services of the church. Amen. 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 Listen, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I wish, and I don't, know how to, I don't even know how to say it, Holy Spirit's going to have to work in your heart. Yeah. But I wish some of you would finally realize you're robbing yourself of the power of the Christian life because you're missing church. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Can I tell you one of the conversations my wife and I have over dinner table? Lunch for, for Yankees, dinner table after church on Sunday mornings. We start talking about that. Well, this person wasn't there. This person wasn't there. This person wasn't there. This person wasn't there. You know what my heart feels inside? I said, Boy, they're missing it. Yeah. They're missing it. Right. Yeah. Right. That's true. Sunday nights, we'll come home. Just say, You want a snack? <laughs> yeah, sure. And I, and I say, what do you want? Because you'll always know the first thing I always want is a quesadilla with pepperoni on the inside. And then if we don't have tortillas, she'll just make me some chips and cheese. And well, well, we'll get that and we'll just, ah, we'll talk and we say, when we start talking about people that are missing. Yeah. Wednesday night, talk about people that are missing. I mean, we start going through the list. Yeah. I've talked to these men oftentimes, have we not? Yeah. We've talked many times. Well, where's this person? They're missing. You know what they're missing? They're, it's, it's not that I'm a great preacher. I, I know I'm not. But I know this. I know that's a great book. Right. And I know there's power inside that book. And you're missing the power in your Christian life that can make you become a better person than what you are right now because you're missing the power of the Holy Ghost by not being faithful to all the services. Amen. Amen. You miss out on God working through your life. Yes. Let me tell you what else they'd have missed if they wouldn't have gone to church. They'd have missed the fellowship with their brethren. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Acts 2.42 says, and they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Yes. You know why I like being in church? Because I love being around God's people to fellowship with them. You know, I hear people complain often. Well, you know, I, I don't have any friends. Well, you don't come to Sunday school. Right. You don't come to Sunday night. You don't come to Wednesday night. How are you going to get friends if you're not around? A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Yeah, I became a friend of Brother Ahmad. He came to church. I came to church. We became friends. Yeah. 
You know how I become friends with Brother Flickner? He goes to church, I go to church, we've become friends. You know how I became an enemy with Brother Dio? I'm sorry, a friend of Brother Dio. He comes to church, I come to church, we've become friends. Do you understand? You're missing the fellow. Listen, there is great fellowship here at Maranatha Baptist Church. The spirit of this place is tremendous. Even on midweek, we come dragging, you know what I'm talking about, you come dragging in on midweek and man, it's been a hot summer day and maybe you're just, you've been working outside and you're, man, I hope the preacher's got some energy tonight and, and you're coming in. All of a sudden, you start fellowshipping with everybody. All of a sudden, the energy's starting to come back because you know why? God made us social beings to be around people and Christians need to be around Christians. Yes, one of the things there when we were going through COVID, those who were around during that time, you heard me say one of the things I do not like about COVID, they're trying to isolate people. God made us social beings. We need to be around each other. You get a person that's all by themselves and never gets out around people. They become depressed. They become suicidal because they're not around people. But you get them around people and the fellowship. And church provides that. We're about ready to start a, a singles Sunday school class for the young singles. Amen. Brother Tremble and his wife are going to start it on the 29th of May. So we're going to have a singles class. I think it's good for Christian singles Amen. to be around Christian singles. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good. We have a youth department. Brother Randy's been planning the activities. You say, why? Because I want the teenagers to realize they can enjoy church and they can enjoy activities a Christian way. You don't have to get drunk to have a good time. The fellowship. The fellowship. Well, I get to talk to Brother Tiger, and I enjoy talking to Brother Tiger. Yeah. Get to talk to Brother Anthony, I get I enjoy talking to Brother Anthony. Yeah. Get to talk to Brother Atterbury, enjoy talking to Brother Atterbury. Yeah. I get to talk to Brother Turk and enjoy talking to Brother Turk. Yeah. Get this now, I enjoy being around God's people, the fellowship. And if they would not have been around, they would have missed the fellowship, and their spirit would have died. Amen. Yeah. They'd have never reached the world. Some of you, I, I'm amazed how your spirit around church is different than around the world. You're more excited about the things of the world than the things of church, and it's because you've been fellowshipping with the wrong crowd. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because the people who are very uncomfortable right now, yeah. Come on. you think it's me, it's not me. That's right. If you're saved, it's called the Holy Ghost of God hitting you right there. Fellowship. Yeah. Fellowship. We miss all the goodness of being around people, the exhortation. Because we miss church. And by the way, whatever your purpose is, your reason for, I was talking to someone this morning. And I said, why, you've been missing, I said, you're out of character. You've been missing some night services. And they said, preacher, I, just, I fall asleep and I, and, I, and I sleep through it. I said, then set your alarm. I understand you get tired. Set your alarm. Get yeah. the type of alarm that's like a fire alarm. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. You'll wake up, yeah. or somebody else will wake you up. Somebody help me out. Right. That's right. But you got to be in church. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Let me tell you what else they did miss. They did miss the doctrinal truth that to help them please the Lord. Right. Yeah. That's right. Acts 2.42 says that they learned doctrine. I want you to listen to me very carefully. You're missing two-thirds of the doctrine preached behind this pulpit when you only come Sunday morning. Now imagine this. I want you to listen to this. Everybody just look up and really listen to this. So you go to the doctor. You're sick. And the doctor gives you a prescription. But you only take one-third of the prescription. What would happen? Still be sick. I was talking to a friend of mine out in California yesterday, and he just had some surgery, and I was telling him I was going to preach on today, and he says, boy, he said, I told him about this little illustration. He goes, oh, Brother Domi, don't say that. He says, I, I didn't listen to the doctor. 
He said, I cut my prescription in half. And he said, it delayed my healing process. There are people only getting one-third, and some aren't even getting one-third because they're not here every Sunday. You expect me in one sermon to provide all the needs in one sermon. Understand, you're missing the truths that can help you that I give on Sunday night and Wednesday night if you just be, we're not here long. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Those who know, if you go to the church uh, website and you see the sermons that we upload, I don't preach long. Right, right. Come on. Yeah. Unless you're under conviction. <laughs> that's, that's right. Hey. That's true. Now understand, but you're missing the truth that, that one, two, thirds of God's prescription for your life that week because you're not there. Right. And I'm not talking about those who are sick. I'm talking about people that could be there that just don't come. I'm talking to many of you. Do you understand? Some of the great things, okay, I, I wrote this down this week as I was studying. I started making, making some observations. My pastor, Dr. Jack Hiles, was called to preach on a Sunday night. One of his um, contemporaries, Brother Joe Boyd, was called to preach on a, on a Sunday night. Dr. Bob Gray Sr., who we've had him in our church, was called to church on a night service. Brother Heidenreich, right back there, was called to preach on a night service. Uh, missionary Rick Martin was called to preach in a night service. I was called to preach on a Monday night service. Uh, Brother Hart Joe was called to preach on a Wednesday night service service. I just checked the rest. You check most preachers, I guarantee it, most of them were called to preach in a night service. And understand this, if we didn't have that, understand where would the churches in America be if people didn't come this Sunday night? Amen. 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 Hey, well, that's right. Where they be? Yeah. yeah. Now somewhere, listen to me, you're missing the moving of God in your heart by not being there Sunday night, Wednesday. You say, preacher, you're trying to build a crowd. No, I'm trying to build lives. Amen. 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 My concern is your life. Listen to me. One day, one day, you're going through troubles. And people, I have this all the time. People come to preacher, can you help me? And I said, Did, were you there on Sunday night? Oh, well, you know, I preached on Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. 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 right, yeah. right. That's true. Come yep. on. We could be so much further as a church yeah. if everybody said, you know what? I want to be faithful. Yeah. Hey. Right. Hey. Let me give you several statements. Night church is still church. Yes, right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Night church is still church. Hey. So when God commands not to forsake the assembling of our that applies to night church. Yes, right. 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 So preacher, I don't believe that. That doesn't change God's word. I've already given you the scriptural illustrations of having church at nighttime. We're just, we're just copying that. Yeah. So to say that it's not in the Bible, it is in the Bible. Amen. Right. Amen. Night church is still church. Statement number two. Night church is as important as day church. Amen. Amen. Can I be honest with you? I don't say, well, I want to, get, I want to preach my best sermon Sunday morning. Can I tell you, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, I always say I got to do my best. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's right. Hey. And anybody who comes to all services will, would agree with me that I try to give my best in every service. Amen. Hey. Yep. That's right. Sometimes on Wednesdays, especially if I'm preaching out of town, I'll leave early in the morning and I'll get here to the church and I've been up since two or three in the morning and I come to church and I still come and I have the, I try to have the same energy I had if I had a whole night's rest. Why? Because Wednesday night is as big as Sunday morning. Amen. 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 I was talking to the great Dr. Lee Robertson. He's in heaven now and built the great Highland Park Baptist Church. And he said, he's talking, he looked at me, he said, Brother Domley, he says, every service is big. Every service, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, every service is big. Amen. He says, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever make one service less. No, we, we do everything big around here. Yeah, yeah. Try tonight. I, I forgot to mention this announcement. Tonight, after the service, we're having pizza. You know why? Why don't you come back tonight? Yeah. Amen. 
I want to be here for the pizza, not the preaching. But I, anyway. <laughs> now understand, I want you to come. Amen. Come. Right. Yeah. Right. If I didn't think it was important, we wouldn't have pizza after services tonight. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, let's just, let's just have a small service. You ever understand? How many times have you ever heard me say, well, we're just going to have a small service? What do I always say? Come for the great evening service, the great midweek service. You know why? It is great. Yeah. Why? We're, we're assembling together. Why? God's going to be there. Why? God's word is there. That's right. Yeah. Statement number three. You'll never become the believer you need to be when you miss night church. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's good. Right. Brother Heinrich, I've never seen one great Christian who only attended Sunday morning. Right. Never. Yeah. Never. Have you seen one? Have you ever seen one? No. Brother Turk, have you ever seen a great Christian that missed? No. no. Brother Delm? No. These are men of God. The great Christians yeah. are there every service. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There is some potentially great Christians in this room. Yeah. Right. Hey. Amen. If you just start getting faithful to services. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I come Sunday night, but I miss Wednesday night. Okay, you missed one third of your prescription. Yeah. One third. Now you have a choice this morning. You can go home and ignore it. Say, I'm not going to change. Preacher can preach that all he wants, so I'm not going to change. He that being often reproved and heart of this neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Somebody help me out. Ushers, help me out. Lock the, this door's supposed to be locked. People moving around in the most important time of the service. Amen. Look up here. Look up here. Father, help us to get our minds back on the sermon right now. So critical what's going on. Help us, please. In Jesus' name. The reason why I ask people not to move around is big. Amen. 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 Understand. Boy, critical, critical that we become great Christians for God. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. You probably sat there and said, why'd you preach that? What do I get out of this? Well, we're having church so that you can get saved too. There's some people in here this morning that if you died right now, you're not 100% sure you go to heaven. Can I tell you, you can't even become a Christian until, first of all, you get saved. Yeah. Yeah, right. Christ has to be your Savior. Right. Right. And can I tell you this morning, if you would just realize, okay, I need to receive Christ as my Savior, then receive him as your Savior. Amen. This morning, realize you're a sinner on your way to hell. Jesus Christ left heaven, came down to this earth, and lived 33 years and never sinned one time. Then he died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried, and rose again. Amen. Amen. So we go to heaven. All you've got to do is receive him. Receive him. The very second that you receive Christ, Holy Spirit moves inside. He says, your soul, Father, I've tried to be kind and gentle in this sermon, but I know it's a convicting sermon for some. Not trying to, and boy, Satan has certainly fought. But God, we need your help. God, I'm asking you right now, there's some people this morning that need to make the decision. I want to start being faithful to all the services. Got to do it. Got to do it. There's potential inside. They're, they're missing the power that can help them to become the great Christian because they're missing services. God help us. There's some that need to get saved. Help them to get saved. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed.